Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and today I'm going to get into Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this tutorial we're going to get into the Garmin G1000. Now as far as the area I'm over, it's the Amazon. You know, I figured why not, because any. And um, But one thing I want to mention before we jump on in is I'll have timestamps down below because this is a very complex system. So as far as things goes um, before we jump further in is how reliable is it to see this system into real world planes i'm going to say uh chances are is you probably won't see this in most of your average day-to-day -day planes the reason why i mentioned that is this system alone is about twenty-five thousand, i think for the hardware alone so then add maintenance or i'm gonna add um um uh, the mechanic going out there and, and installing it and whatnot, you're, you're talking about a significant amount of money. And keep in mind that if you had it, it's anything taken apart or whatnot, that's your chance of breaking. And if it's not broken, don't fix it type of situation. So, what you're going to find is most planes don't have something like this. However, a lot of the newer ones, they're moving to things like this. So, I'm thinking about 20, 30 years from now. We're going to see this in pretty much most of the planes to, to a high degree. It should not concern people, you know, because the fact is, is most of the planes actually just have some regular dials and stuff like that. And uh, the reason why is a plane that works in the 1950s works today. Physics has not changed. However, with FAA regulations, you just got to mo make modifications here and there. And there you go. But for the most part, the um, all the planes are good to go, and uh, you just won't see a lot of this simply because of the cost of the plane versus the cost of the unit. You know, most of the planes out there maybe are 50,000, uh, maybe a little bit more, some a bit less. Whereas this is about half the cost of the plane, or about a quarter of the cost of the plane. Most owners won't see it as a worthwhile investment, especially when you got to change out the engine every so often. and and we're not talking about you know simply an oil change in the car we're talking about full-on things get changed out and stuff like that and it's it's just it's just a messy deal with it it costs a lot of money to run a plane over a period of time so with that one in mind this uh, if you want to to learn this to help you fly that's one thing great highly recommend because it's actually easier to read this than most other things and a lot of stuff translates over to regular uh, re regular stuff but if you're trying to get into this to learn a say hey I'm going to just be able to jump in the plane and take off no the fact of the matter is is you need to figure out what type of plane you want to own or what type of plane you would normally rent and uh, figure out what is normally within the dashboard and that will give you a hint at what's regular and what's not it could be this so as far as that goes let's uh let's just jump into it so we're going to start from left to right and um, as far as the upper areas we have volume control so we have volume for the nav and volume for comms the nav portion i'm going to get into a later video uh, that's an entire beast into itself. But as far as comps goes, one thing I would mention is if you're on the tarmac and you're not ready for ground services or ATC, you know, you're trying to do your thing, and uh, there's a lot of chatter and you know it's distracting or you just don't want to hear it, then you can actually turn this all the way down in, in game and it will turn down the volume from that. Or if you want to hear something or want to turn down whatever, you can do that with this so as far as the uh, down below we can change the frequencies of the nav and we can change the frequencies of the um, the actual radio so if you take a look at that uh, you may see something like the um, this or it says turn to two four whatever and um, if we got the right frequency then it automatically does that highly suggest doing it in here versus anywhere else because you're automatically going to, have to make selections in there anyways so why waste your time i mean unless you really want to be 
as realistic as possible. Obviously, when speech text comes through, if it ever does come through, then that's one thing. But as it is, yeah. So, as far as the uh, thing below that, we got the barometric pressure. And uh, we can change this, as you see here on the right area, it changes that. And uh, as far as what that does, is if we call in to most places, they'll get, say, set out or to whatever, in this case, 2992. And as we actually switch that, you can see it changes the uh, this thing, which is the altitude, how high off up the ground are you. Very simple stuff. Um, and, and this is very useful. One thing I kind of wish, just throw it in there, is... Um, you currently cannot call in for this reading so when it comes across pay attention and set it thin because there's no other way to get this reading other than that or doing some weird drop out thing and drop back in to get it so yeah so as far as the uh, thing to the left we got the heading and if we take a look at this right here and this right here as I turn this thing one way or the other you can see that turning so for those of you who don't know uh, basically a circle is 360 degrees and if we start around zero uh, which is true north the uh, or 360 the um, fact is is like say for example I need to go to 100, 100 degrees on a compass then I can see oh I need to go this way and I, I, I know which way to start pointing my stuff the number at the top right here is the current heading that you're going to and you can just figure out how far off you are from that and, and, and that helps you out quite a bit now you may be wondering about the CRS the um, I'm going to get into this in a later video, but the thing to note is if you press the uh, CDI, you can actually turn the, uh, for, for the VOR, you can actually turn the CRS um, for VOR 1 and 2. And um, just note that when you got in GPS mode, this doesn't do nothing. Um, you can center things, so, you know, if I wanted to, I can center those if you press that so below that we have the map stuff so if we take a look at the bottom left we can actually zoom in and zoom out and how this thing works is if you take a look at this number right in this area you'll find that it increases and decreases by how much we're zooming in and out so yeah, note that it tells you how, how close you are. Um, we'll get a little bit more in the map in a second. In fact, let's get into it right now. So if we click the insert button, we can actually select if we want to show weather on a map. And as you see here, we can make it <laughs> really scary. But uh, yeah, so we can even have different colors and whatnot. And yeah, so. In my opinion, it's best to not have any actual um, weather on here. So we can set the altitude, increase altitude, uh, decrease altitude type of thing. And what this does is it allows us to set our limits. The reason why you'll use this is once you hit that number, they'll put an audio sound out. And then um, when you go past that, uh, either going above or below, It'll give you a different audio sound, and it'll start flashing and stuff. So it helps you uh, at least keep it within the actual range. So that, that's something worthwhile noting. So if we hit the P PFD, we can get other options, um, like wind. So if we go back, we can actually see the uh, this, this and this. I'll get into these on a later date. It has to deal with VOR stuff. The following is ADF slash DM DME. This is goes along with that nav video. Like I said, it's a 
piece into itself, but uh, his ADF is automatic direction finding. So this next one, uh, it's actually kind of funny. Um, I, I'm going to get into a different video on to this particular one because it's a transponder. And um, if you want to do some realistic stuff, you need to know where to use transponders, like what where it's needed and what's not. But, uh, so if you go into the code, they get pissed when uh, you mess around with that. Diamond X recall, Sierra reset transponder. Squawk 1712. They kind of get uh, upset if um, you change that and, and that's an entire video into it. The following is a uh, reference, uh, basically time, glide, you know, speed, knots, and so on. Uh, I'm not going to really get into this because um, that's not within the scope of this video. Next we have nearest airports. This, um, it's actually quite handy when it comes to finding what, what's nearby. Note the other screen actually has a little bit of better resources when it comes to that. Following that we have the FPL which is flight plan, direct flight course of so a set. Um, a direct link to somewhere. So, say for example, if I know I want to go to, say, that airport, I can put that into there and run it. Uh, we got menu, we got set procedure, so we can set the approach. We got clear and accept buttons. Now, in the middle, most of all of this is comms, so I'm not really going to get into any of that. Um, I think, yeah, we got nav, and again, I'll get into that in a different video into itself. On this particular panel, we got the same thing, audio, nav, head, heading, all of the other stuff as we've seen on the previous one. One thing I forgot to mention is on this, if you click it, uh, you can actually pan around on a map by doing something simple as that. Um, you know, it's a useful tool to figure out where you are and where things are next. And as far as this goes, if we go to our main screen, we can go to map. We can go change displays. This is weather. It's a uh, horizontal. If we change the vertical, we can see how high the clouds are. So, say for example, we're pretty low to the ground. So let's just say, and also let's decrease the range by far and as you see here we can move that up you know we, you can see that we can do some interesting things here just by playing with that yeah so it should be noted that th this this is highly useful when doing long distances and some other stuff but you also need to note the range on that so from here we can go to the airport information by scrolling the wheel right here and uh, we can put in say for example I want to put in and it tells us frequency information runways and some other stuff and then we got the system set up and I wouldn't worry about this but here one and for the game wise then uh, nearest airports and I believe that takes us back to the main page now as far as a few other things and notes in here this notes the important area right over here so we got how much fuel we currently have um, over in this other areas we have temperatures so note that we got gallons per hour we have um, other things over here load and RPM over there then um, if we take a look at this general area right here we have the autopilot stuff um, now as far as this goes we have engage autopilots, disengage autopilot. We have the flight director. Uh, I kind of highly recommend keeping that on. It, it helps out a lot. 
um, heading select. Uh, so basically how that works is basically you tell it what heading you want to go to. So if I, I say engage, if I turn the heading, it um, the autopilot tries to take me to that heading. It's really simple. Altitude hold it keeps me at this current altitude. Um, nav. VNV. VNV, as far as I can tell, does not work right now. So how that normally works is if I if I draw somewhere. Um, quick uh, basically if I got a few markers, like uh, say for example a few waypoints and it slowly goes down. So I know I'm going to an airport about around here. I can use a VMV for that. Um, when that comes out, I'm splitting a little bit more into that. I just want to, you know, put, you know, very quick, a few cents in, so you know what it is. Then we got approach mode. We have the back course mode, uh, vertical speed mode on, um, and increase decrease speed, and the uh, flight level, right there. I will explain all of the autopilot stuff into its own video because it is its own beast into itself. So as far as some other things to note in here, just last few tips, is um, if we want to figure out where the alerts and stuff is, it's within this general area right here. So if we actually take out all the fuel, we can see it happen right there and we can even see some other stuff right there and you get the audio cue the audio cue you can't really help you too much on that but if this flashing light bugs you just hit that that gets rid of it and you're you're good to go you got alerts right there by the way now if i want to do something uh, as far as go somewhere up there if we go to direct we can actually press enter here and as far as that goes why did i not take it So, right here, now I mean, just trying to use this example. Um, I got into a different video on how the flight plan works, but we can actually see that it thinks that we want to go to this symbol, uh, which you can see right there in the flight plan. If we do a direct, it should show that, but for some reason it messed up. Um, this shows the distance, this shows the degrees, that the heading. So if we actually change that to actually reflect that, um, you know, it's fairly basic stuff. And notes that this um, upper area right here shows you what's active. So if we turn off autopilot, you'll see it turns off their altitude. We could even say, you know, um, see what the altitude is supposed to be set on. Had, um, navigation that uh, you know whatever and um, that that should help us out quite a bit and and quickly seeing what's active what isn't uh, without hovering over it and say oh it needs to be engaged or not okay engage um, note that a lot of stuff is reflected on this other screen and then even on top of that it has an ETA on how long it thinks that it will take for you to get to the location, uh, final location. So as far as that goes, if you got any questions, anything else, then feel free to let me know. And I will try to answer as best as I can. If you feel like I left anything out, then feel free to also let me know in the comment section. And I'll try to uh, include that either in another video or maybe in the comments down below. But anyways, leave a like, subscribe, share, and check out my other videos. And also, please feel free to hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos. And uh, feel free to donate to the links down below, which helps out quite a bit in making these videos and other videos. But anyways, hope you have a great day, because I'm pretty sure this plane won't.